All right, so I am taking a look at the Actinon Verba A100 here. Um, and this was something I was kind of excited to uh, check out. Uh, this is a, uh, a knife made in the Czech Republic. If you're not familiar with uh, Actinon Verba as a company, they're fairly new. Um, this is using basically a crossbar lock, as you can see here. It's got a little thumb disc here. Um, and that actually has a, a little glow dot in there. And, uh, well, I could probably... Uh, well, at least you can see it glowing there when I'm using a uh, black light on it. Yeah, you can see that uh, glowing nicely there. And it glows for a decent amount of time there. Um, and the reason why I ended up picking this up uh, was because, well, I was kind of interested in the, uh, the company in general. And because this is um, the version of the knife coming in uh, Magna Cut Steel here. Uh, this thing, um, I will say... I have a, a couple of gripes about it, um, and the first and foremost one, but one that I was certainly aware of, is uh, this one is uh, very, very, very squishy in the handle. As you can see, I can completely uh, close up that gap without a whole lot of force going on there. Uh, this one uh, is does, has a lot of design um, similarities to the uh, the Benchmade 940. Um, well, I suppose that uh, the blade's about the same. It's a little bit taller and stuff like that. But that being said, it's uh, because of the uh, the liner kind of configuration in here, where the liners on this one actually come back all the way to uh, here, but they're very, very thin, and you only have a, a large kind of liner uh, up top here. And this is uh, very, very similar to that, where you can see this right here. And these screws that attaches to the end of the liner. So from here on back, there's literally nothing but uh, some ridged plastic on there. And this also has a ridged, or uh, just the uh, the standard um, GRN material uh, going for a backspacer there. Um, so, kind of that, that was definitely my first gripe here is uh, it is very, very flexible. That is uh, the problem that uh, a lot of people ended up having with the, um, with the standard bug outs. That's why a lot of them now are uh, G10 uh, so that they uh, don't do that. And uh, I suppose also using the uh, CF Elite material also helped a little bit with the rigidity for the, uh, the cheaper ones in that lineup. Um, the next thing was um, doing the uh, the sharpness test on here. Uh, I did that. Obviously, I covered it in, um, in the previous video where I had my first impressions on it. And, um, well, I don't necessarily blame them because the steel is kind of difficult to um, work with and it's fairly new. But they had a ridiculous roll on it and then they just basically sharpened that. So, this thing had... Um, Scored, uh, what was it, a 220 or a 250? One of those two on the, uh, the sharpness test out of the box. But that was basically a sharpened burr. So that really wasn't going to last all that long. Um, I've uh, sharpened it up since then, 15 degrees per side. And uh, yeah, that does take a bit of effort. Uh, Magna Cut isn't uh, an absolute impossible beast to be able to deal with. But yeah, it still took... A considerable amount of time to do the full reprofiling thing on it. So there's that. Um, the action on this uh, is not fantastic and uh, that's because the, on these particular models they use nylon uh, washers. Two stacks on each side. Very very thin film. Uh, it's either nylon or Teflon. One of the two there. Uh, which is interesting because if you look for uh, parts on their website, uh, they have those same exact shapes, but they're phosphor bronze. And I guess they they use those for the other knives that they do. Um, the other folders, I guess just not the A100 or 200. It's either that or they uh, cheap out on these and you can buy the, uh, the better ones <laughs> later on from their website. I don't know. Uh, but either way, um, yeah, this thing does not have a super, super great action. And uh, you can see this thing does take, uh, you know, quite a bit of uh, wiggling and stuff like that. Uh, not super easy to whip out or back closed with it. And uh, this is also with it uh, 
having a bit of blade play in it, so it's not uh, fully tightened down. Of course, access locks in general will always have just a little tiny bit of blade play almost all the time um, because there's a real fine line between tightening these up so that they, uh, they very, very difficultly move or they're free floating. So there's that. Um, something else that's a, a little interesting to me on this is that that uh, glow dot thing, I guess more of a uh, cost saving measure is um, it's not on both sides, which is frustrating uh, because, well, this is basically an ambidextrous knife. Uh, other than that, you have that crossbar lock. Technically, you can swap this uh, wire clip, which is really, really nice and rigid feeling. So that's good. I do like that. Um, and you can see it is quite crazy deep carry in there. And you can technically swap this over, but you do need to kind of remove the scales to do that. Uh, because that screw has basically that little piece of hardware that's not included on the other side. So you have to swip, swap that other piece of hardware over there too. So there's that. And the piece de la resistance that kind of pissed me off was... Um, I wanted to uh, remove that thumb disc uh, just to help with uh, sharpening. And, uh, well, it's a T6, and I kind of stuck it in there, and uh, immediately it stripped. Um, the rest of the hardware on here was fine, but the one that they're using for that, it's uh, not the highest quality, so there's, there's that. So, as far as uh, a lot of the, um, the quality kind of stuff goes for it, um, you know, like, like I said, I, I do have some grievances out with it out of the box. Um, but you can still deploy it rather easily with that. Um, because we don't have any liners back here, the, uh, the balance is really blade heavy. It, uh, it balances pretty much at, uh, the blade pivot rather than, um, back here where, uh, your hand is. So it does feel a little bit more blade heavy than a lot of other ones that I'm used to. Um, but of course, all of that is to say I did purposely buy this thing knowing that this thing just had, um, some, uh, some, uh, GRN kind of, uh, handles on there. I didn't realize that it just has itty bitty little, um, liners here. I thought they were, uh, full length. So that was a, a little bit of a, a surprise to me, but there you go. This thing uh, is ground decently, so there is definitely that. Um, not, uh, you know, super laser, laser thin. They wanted to uh, have it be a little bit more rugged and hard use with that. And uh, that kind of coincides with um, having the uh, the swedge there, but uh, still swelling out to uh, give you a lot of uh, tip strength there. And uh, it's not quite uh, a full crown, but they, they have chamfered uh, the sides of the blade there. Um, for whatever reason, that uh, thumb disc, as you can see, uh, does actually stick up proud of the um, the blade there. I don't know necessarily. I don't know. That's not exactly something I particularly like. But, uh, you know, it doesn't functionally hurt anything. It just looks a little slapdash um, just in, uh, in the design sort of thing there. So, all right, there's all of that. Uh, the blade seems to be super great so far, so I don't really have any uh, complaints with that. Like I said, it did take uh, quite a bit of time to do that. However, what I do have to say, and of course this is because, uh, uh, certainly because it's not manufactured uh, in China, is I think this is kind of expensive for what it is. Um, this is the uh, the model with MagnaCut, some blade steel on here, and this is $200. And it seems to me like you probably paid um, like $180 for the blade. Maybe like, um, you know, like uh, the rest of it going into hardware. And uh, of course these handles, which they, they've they certainly done them to uh, keep a price down or something like that. Uh, I just don't think are really cutting the mustard, unfortunately. But yeah, this one in MagnaCut is uh, 100 or $200. Uh, they do also have a, a cheaper version that's uh, exactly the same, but they're using Elmax steel. Uh, and those are 160 So you are paying a bit of a premium just for that blade steel, but hey, it's the new hotness. And um, 
and they're one of the few companies, uh, production companies who have really come out with, uh, any of it, uh, so far. Uh, I think I might have been a little bit happier probably picking up a, uh, a Hogue Decca in, um, in, uh, Magna Cut, uh, just because the, uh, the handles on it would probably be a little bit better. I think, honestly, the ones that have Magna Cut are still using kind of poly handles. They're not using their G-Mascus that they, they want some others. And I think that's all just kind of coming down to trying to keep the price down on the, the Magna Cut steel. But, I still think it's probably a better option unless you are absolutely in love with this blade shape here. Whereas, you know, that Deca is kind of a strange um, compound grind, uh, modified Warncliffe sort of thing. And this is just a little bit more uh, standard drop point. So, yes, uh, I don't really have any problems feeling like this thing, the, the handles will fail necessarily on this. But um, this is definitely not something that uh, is designed for anywhere near hard use, I don't think. Uh, mostly because you have those liners that attach here, and uh, all of this portion is just plastic. So if you are putting a, a decent amount of force on there, you are going to start warping and bending these um, these handle scales. That, that's just kind of the nature of the beast there. So, yeah, I'm kind of at a crossroads. I mean, obviously it's mine. I've... Uh, disassembled it to try to uh, help out with the action and uh, clean that out and everything like that. Putting it back together is a bitch. So, um, you know, I've, <laughs> uh, there's, um, three kind of, uh, pegs, um, in the, uh, on the inside of these liners here, um, that, uh, those, these little liner things need to sit into. And it is really difficult to get all three of them to seat so that it's flush. Otherwise, one of them will kind of bow out there. And yeah, so this one is uh, quite a bit more difficult to uh, put back together than uh, a lot of other access locks. And yeah, like I said, that all comes down to the, uh, the handle materials. But again, again, I've, uh, you know, mentioned that uh, I... Um, acted non verba, I do believe at least, um, I think it was at Blade Show. I don't believe it was at Shot Show. Did mention something about, um, possibly, uh, manufacturing, um, G10 scales that you can buy aftermarket from them or something like that. I haven't found them yet, but, uh, if that does, um, end up being the case, I will happily upgrade that because these, uh, these handles just, um, really don't make this feel like a $200 knife. They make it feel like um, <laughs> a little bit more of a uh, uh, $15 uh, Walmart special kind of thing. And, uh, you know, obviously I don't have problems necessarily with GRN scales. Um, sorry if there was a loud sound there. I uh, hit my microphone stand. But, yeah, something like, um, you know, the uh, the Spyderco... Uh, Enduras and Delicas uh, have those uh, same kind of GRN scales. They are thicker. These things are super, super thin. But they also have fully skeletonized liners. And these things just feel absolute bulletproof. So I don't have a problem with the material itself, but uh, just kind of their implementation for it. Um, they do have uh, horizontal ridges uh, going on the inside in the, uh, in the molding process to give you a little bit more uh, fulcrum support, I suppose, but still, yeah, I don't really think it will hold up if you are actually putting a, um, heavy use on there for, uh, using it in a little bit more hard use situation. So yeah, interesting. And, and I'm not sad that I have the knife, but yes, I, I do definitely have some grievances with it. It's, uh, it's not, uh, an absolute perfect knife in my opinion. I think it probably needs um, yeah, you know, definitely, uh, some more rigid handles, um, or at least make available, uh, some G10 ones or something like that. Uh, that would be fantastic. Uh, I think possibly extending the liner length on these things would help, uh, quite a bit with balance overall, um, because it's, uh, very, very blade heavy. Um, they, they probably need to work a little bit on their quality check for the sharpening itself, whereas I said in the beginning, they basically had a large burr formed on one side and then they sharpened that. <laughs> so, 
So that was uh, something that it was decently sharp, 200 to 250 or so on the best tester. But, um, you know, that was basically on a wire edge that's not going to last very long, regardless of what steel it was. So that wasn't super fantastic there. Um, and phosphor bronze washers as a, as a standard on there rather than the, uh, the nylon ones would also help. Uh, because, I mean, at the end of the day, this is a really, really expensive knife. And, uh, the blade is probably really, really fantastic. But the rest of it, I really feel like kind of ruins it. Uh, I do like the, uh, the ergonomics of the handle. Um, you know, they're, they're decently comfortable. Um, of course, almost any kind of GRN knife that doesn't have liners that, uh, are equal with it. Uh, it is going to be a little sharp in the bottom of your hand. You get that on um, uh, a lot of stuff too. But jeez, I'm just bumping everything, aren't I? Uh, you'll get that also on like a cold steel or something like that that has their um, grivery handles. Same kind of thing there. So, yeah, I suppose I can. Um, do some blade size comparisons on it, uh, since I have already pulled out a couple of things here. So there we go with a couple of spider kills. And let's bring in some benchmates. I obviously brought in the 940 a little bit earlier, but sure, why not? We'll pull out the bug out as well. So it's a fairly full length, um, kind of knife there but yeah I, I just uh, I do think that uh, the hardware probably needs to be a little bit better especially on like um, the uh, this thumb disc because it's stripped out without any kind of effort um, I stuck my t6 in there and went yes that is the size and then put a little bit of pressure on there and thought that the screw was loosening until I realized nothing was happening. And then immediately saw, oh, it just stripped out immediately. And uh, that's kind of a problem on a knife that's supposed to be ambidextrous for you to be able to swap that over. And I've, I'm repeating myself again here, which uh, I'm trying to avoid doing. And that's uh, a lot of the reasons why I end up re-recording a video or something like that before it goes up. But... Uh, Screw it, I just want to get through this thing here. <laughs> um, uh, also, being able to swap that clip over to the other side um, might require a little bit of a rethink on there because you have to um, disassemble and take off these uh, scales to be able to do that, and that is a nightmare in and of itself with um, access locks and stuff like that. So there you go. It has standard Omega Springs. They look basically the uh, the same exact size and shape that Benchmade uses. So, you know, if you have any uh, problems with uh, Benchmade's Omega Springs, it'll probably apply to this and basically any other crossbar lock mechanism out there on the market. So, there's that. So, yeah, I'm happy to have Magnica in my collection, but, um, you know, there is a lot that could be improved with, um, you know, some more uh, of these models moving forward. Uh, obviously they do have uh, a little bit more robust folders in their, uh, in their lineup as well, but they don't offer them in Magna Cut and they're also, you know, much more in that, um, we kind of territory of, uh, pricing somewhere in the, uh, 200, uh, to, uh, well, 300 some odd dollars and up and stuff like that for a lot of those, which, uh, I'm not super interested in. So, all right, yep, yeah, that is the uh, the Acton Nonverba A100. That uh, neat, but I have some caveats. So, alrighty, as always, I appreciate y'all for watching, and have yourself a wonderful rest of your day, yo. Yeah? Subscribe.